Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Gorhamian here with Misfit Studios as always, and today we're going to be showing you how to make the shake transition in HitFilm Express. Alright, so the shake transition, what we need to do of course is bring in all of our footage. We're going to actually be using two small clips today. Um, you can use any size clips that you want, of course. This is just going to be transitioned from one clip to the other. Um, we're actually going to be using um, a little bit of a Space Engineers and some Counter-Strike Global Offensive. So what we're going to do is, it looks like the CSGO clip is longer. So we're going to make that our composite shot. And it, the name of it is okay. Name's not really important. Okay. But first, what I want to do is I actually want to change the way my workspace looks. So we're going to go over and we're going to change workspace over to compositing. Um, I have found, I know the last, the previous videos we've been, you know, doing in kind of a custom workspace, but I've actually been, you know, kind of doing things a little different with, you know, how I lay my workspace out. And I really like the layout of the, you know, preset compositing workspace. Okay, so now that we've got our composite shot in. This is gonna be our first video, our first clip that you're gonna see. So let's go ahead and bring in the other clip on top of the first one. So this one's actually gonna be moved all the way to the end because we're not gonna see this until, you know, the uh, towards the end of the clip. We're gonna drag this guy forward just like that so they can snap, snap together in that way. And it looks like Make sure we've got all of it here. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Okay. Um, and so what we're going to do is, of course, you know, if you're going to be, you know, using the entire clip for your transition, you know, dragging those points to begin and end isn't, you know, the best way of going about that. You can also just make a blank composite shot and then add your media into it. That way you can move things around without cutting off the end of um, one clip or another. Okay, so first what we're going to do is we're actually going to add a new grade, new grade layer. And what grade layers are is basically they're changing the settings and any effects and they're applying it to anything, any layer underneath it. Okay, so anything that's underneath that grade layer, so our two clips, will have the effects and settings applied to those two layers. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring up the shake effect and add that to the grade. Okay, now if we play this video... What you're going to see is it's actually going to shake the video. Um, so what we want to do is we actually want to keyframe those. So by doing that, it's a little easier. Instead of going up to the controls and doing it this way, it's just a little easier for me to um, when you're key when I'm keyframing to to do all my controls down here on the timeline. Um, any other controls like changing the amount or the speed or you know anything like that, depending on what effect you're using it it is sometimes easier to go up into the controls panel. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go to the very end or where the two videos transition. It looks like about nine seconds in. So we're actually going to go back one second, one second before that transition. And we're actually going to keyframe the amount. And we're going to change that value to zero. Okay, we're then going to go and transfer to the center of our two clips. We're going to change that amount to 45. So what that's going to do is it's going to, um, there won't be any shake in the beginning of the video. So let's go ahead and play that. And as you can see, there is no shake during that. Once it gets to that point, it'll slowly start to shake, okay? It'll, it'll increase its value. Now that we've got the amount that we want it to shake keyframed in, we're actually going to keyframe this scale. So it will shake more and more aggressively as we get closer to the transition. So let's go ahead and keyframe our scale. We're going to actually set that at 1 at the beginning. And then we're going to go to the next keyframe, which is where our two videos transition. We're going to actually keyframe that scale just up to baby 1.5, just there. So it is going to zoom in a little bit as it's doing this. So let's go ahead and back away from that, kind of see how it looks. And not too bad. We're actually going to, let's make this, let's make this seed just a little bit higher. And what that seed is going to do is it's going to randomly generate values for HitFilm to track that across, you know, the plane, across the, the viewer. 
and the seed is just telling HitFilm to randomize things, okay? Um, and so we're going to just keep those values like they are. We're actually going to turn smooth up just a little bit, probably to about 10. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it a little bit, um, obviously a little smoother, but it's gonna, not going to look as computer generated as, you know, as jerky. And so let's go ahead and get to our other clip. It's actually going to snap over our other clip. And we're going to actually jump forward a second to 10. And then now we're going to keyframe everything back down to its original, just like that. So what you're doing is you're actually shaking and then zooming at the same time. So it's kind of a zoom shake effect, if you will. What we want to do now is we actually want to go to the value graph. And as you can see here, this um, transition that we've made from you know one video to the other, um, is not real smooth. I mean, we could add these and change these these values to smooth if we wanted to. But what we want to do is we actually want to change this key here to manual bezier. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us these little control tabs. You can do that on the smooth too, but the manual um, setting is a lot easier to you know manipulate and change. What we're going to do is we're actually going to grab this guy and bring it all the way down and then do the exact same thing on the other side just like that. So we get this um, nice pointed shape. And what that's going to do is it's over time from this keyframe to this keyframe is actually going to accelerate the closer it gets to that point and then decelerate slower as it gets to the last point, if that makes any sense. Let's go ahead and hit play on that and kind of see where we're at. The zoom's not bad. I actually want to back the zoom off just a, or the, the scale just a little bit. So we're actually going to go to 1.25. There we go. That's... That's a little bit better. It was just getting a little too close. So now that we've got our keyframes in on how we want things to transition, um, we're actually going to add a blur effect to it because um, with this, it's still kind of snapping from one from one clip to the other. So let's go ahead and go up into our controls or our effects panel rather, and I just deleted it. So let's go back to our workspaces compositing and it'll bring it back up. Okay, now that we've got the effects tab back because someone decided to hit the, you know, effects escape on it, we're gonna actually going to add the blur, the motion blur, which is under blurs, of course, and we're gonna add that to our new grade. Okay, so now that we've got the keyframes established, we're actually just gonna go and um, use the existing keyframes that we have. Um, so to do that, what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring the shake up and it's going to be, we're going to go ahead and use the blur. And you can, of course, set a preset, whether it's heavy, medium, or subtle. Um, we're actually going to go to the medium blur. We're going to go back to our um, keyframe view here instead of the value graph. Um, and we're actually going to open up both the shake and the blur effects on our timeline. That way we can see where these where these keyframes are for the shake effect. So we can just basically copy those onto that. So we're gonna keyframe the first one, which is eight seconds. So it's a second before the transition that we wanna start in. Add a keyframe in, we're gonna change the radius to zero, okay? So there is no um, blur effect happening you know, in the rest of the video, because if you don't keyframe that first value in, you're going to have a blur effect added to the entire clip. So then we're actually going to advance by one second to where the two clips will actually meet. And we're going to change that value back to 15 pixels. Okay. And then advance one more second, of course, to the end. And we're going to change that blur back to zero. Let's go ahead and jump into the value graph again. We're going to change all of our selected keyframes to the manual bezier, and we're going to make that same exact shape as we did with the shake effect. Okay. So now that we've got those all keyframed, let's go ahead and um, play this through the transition and see how it looks. It's not bad. We're going to have to probably export it out to try and really see the transition because sometimes um, HitFilm doesn't want to, you know, show every single frame in the in the viewer before it's exported. And so 
We do have a little bit of shake. What we're going to do, though, is I'm actually going to change this center keyframe here to a little higher value because it's not really... Let's try that. Let's try 100 and see how well it does. There we go. That's a lot better. So the, the shake is... Um, a little bit more prominent. You can see that shape, but before we uh, change that value to a little higher, it was just kind of a zoom blur effect. Um, and so now that we've got all of our settings the way we want them, what we can do is we actually can highlight these two effects and then we can actually create a preset using them. So let's go ahead and shake transition. We're going to put that in the my, my presets folder. So if you want to use that transition later on, you don't have to set and tweak all of your settings. You've got all of your presets in already. Um, and so you can actually go to your effects page if you don't have, you know, if you don't know how to use presets or save presets. I've got a video on that. I'll link that in the description below. Um, just real quick, right under presets, my presets, and then you can have this shake transition presets that you can apply to a grade or a different layer that you want to put the pre or put the transition in. All right, now that we've got it exported, let's go ahead and see how it looks. There you go. Not a, not a terribly complicated transition, but at the same time, you can repeat it over and over again, and it gives your videos just that much more flair. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. Gorhamian here with Misfit Studios, as always, and we will see you guys next time.